Ukraine is heartbreaking and growing more troubling by the hour. We also know it is constantly evolving, and although Conservatives support the government's actions to date, we do believe there are things that could have been done faster. Many of the government's actions were too little, too late. One thing we are asking the, the Canadian government to do right away is to expel Russian's ambassador to Canada and recall our ambassador from Russia. Will the government commit to doing that immediately? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. Canada and Canadians are united in our support for the brave people of Ukraine and their extraordinary president, Volodymyr Zelensky. This is a fight between freedom and tyranny. Ukrainians are fighting for themselves and for all of us. As I rise today for the first time in this House, I'd like to say to the people of Ukraine, from everyone in this House, how deeply we respect and admire them. Slava Ukraini. The Honourable. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and we agree with the Minister uh, wholeheartedly. We think that there are more things that we can do to help the Ukrainian people. Ukrainians are fleeing their country, and they're looking for a safe place, but we know they don't want to be permanent refugees. They want to be able to live in a safe, peaceful, and sovereign Ukraine. Canadian can, Canadians and Canada can be a safe haven for them. We have the opportunity right now to host Ukrainians that are being displaced by the Putin invasion. One of the things that we could do is allow visa-free travel for Ukrainians coming to Canada. Will the government commit today to remove the requirements for visas for Ukrainians coming to Canada. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, in her previous question, the Leader of the Opposition asked about the Russian ambassador, and I would like to address that. Now is a time when everyone in the world must pick a side. A few brave Russian officials have spoken out against Putin's barbaric war. We encourage all Russians to oppose this war. Silence is complicity, and following orders is not an excuse. And so when it comes to Canada's response, everything is on the table. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Thank you. We look forward to a decision from the government on that very quickly. Speaker, many are saying what we've been saying for a long time, and that is that Canada and the world needs to end its dependency on Russian oil and gas. Canada imports almost a million dollars worth of Russian oil every day. The Prime Minister has spent the last six years waging a war on Canadian oil and gas. That needs to end. It's bad for Canada. It's bad for the world. It here, here. only helps Russia. Here, here. When will the Prime Minister stop our dependency on Russian oil and instead work to get Canadian oil and gas to the world? Here, here. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, today Canada, together with our allies, took unprecedented action against a world-leading economy. We have hamstrung Russia's central bank, thus depriving Putin of access to his war chest. We have shown that sanctions do work and Fortress Russia is exposed. We agree that oil and gas do fund Putin's war machine, and we're working on that too.